going on everybody I'm Mike you're watching this old hot rod on YouTube started this YouTube channel about a year and a half ago just to uh, well I just document I guess show people some of the adventures that I go on a couple years ago a year and a half ago just to kind of document my hot rodding adventure my hot rodding adventures and that's what I've been doing building cars going to hot rod events you guys know the deal so today working on the T uh, you guys saw last video seats got installed what we're gonna continue working on today is this. This bag was my grandfather's from World War II. My uncle, has, unfortunately, was since passed, used this as his book bag. These were his initials. I'm gonna use this on the car, maybe put it in here or something like that. Just as like a, a little storage pouch. So this is what we're working on today. This is my rear cross member template for the cover that's gonna go over that. And then what I need to do after I get this built, I need to get some blisters made for these shocks. I shut the heater off because it's warming up in here now. Uh, I got my template all built for the rear cross member. I tried to keep it pretty close as far as the height goes. There's, it's pretty much sitting right, right on it, right on the U-bolt. So I'm hoping I can use what I have made here and uh, make it work. So I've already taken my measurements. You see the pencil marks, pencil marks, pencil marks here, pencil marks here. That is the top. That's the top piece here. So I'll break this edge on the bottom here. And then there's another one on this side. I'm gonna try to do it in three pieces. Shouldn't be an issue. Get this top piece here, the front and the back. All right, so let's uh, get to work on getting this piece of metal cut, try to find a couple scrap pieces that I can use for the front and the back. But it's getting there. I just got that one piece and the blisters and then the whole trunk floor is done. start of it. So what I need to do now is I need to grab my shrinker stretcher and I need to figure out, make some measurements, figure out where my center line is, and then try to figure out how far out I need to start my radius, how aggressive I need to, to uh, shrink it. And then at the ends, what I'll need to do is it, it, it'll come, it'll arch down and then it'll flare back out. Then I'll need to stretch the bottoms, the, the ends rather. So I need to shrink the middle portion and stretch the ends. Because I want to get a measurement, the width of the cross member, 40 inches. You see what I have here. So I have 48, 
All right, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna get my middle measurement. I'm gonna measure the center so I know I have a little bit of wiggle room on each side. I'm gonna start at zero or 24 inches from wherever end I kind of figure. So I'm gonna go zero and then 24 out each direction. And then like I said, but I only need 40 inches, so I'll have four inches on each side extra. So what I'm gonna do first is concentrate on the center arch, the, the hump of my rear cross member. And then I'll make my measurements and then flare it back down. And I'll be able to hopefully just set it down on top of that. I'll have to cut out wherever my shock blisters are gonna be. I'll do that after. All right, so let's uh, measure this up real quick and get it start getting uh, things shrunk. So I'll measure the factory edge. And I'm just gonna measure two feet. That's my two foot mark. That's my one foot mark. I know most people that watch this channel have done all this stuff in the past. For those that haven't, the reason I'm making a mark every inch is so I, it's a guide. It's something I can follow So as I'm stretching or shrinking the panel or the metal, I can do it basically one inch at a time and make sure the pressure as I push down on the tool is the same pressure. As long as I apply the same pressure in the same place, I should essentially get the same result. So I want to make the arch as symmetrical as I possibly can, I guess is the best way I'm trying to say. So I'm making a one inch a line, uh, making a mark each inch just to use as a guide. And I'm going to try not to try to keep the pressure even each time I push down on the tool. So I am four inches on each side of the center is where my U-bolts are. It's already starting to, to curve down there. So I know, I mean, I'm gonna, start the, I'm gonna start the arch right in the center. I want it to have a continuous flow. I'm not gonna have any flat. I'm gonna do, so 12 inches. 12 inches brings me pretty close to the transition to where it's gonna start flattening back out again. My focus, is going to be 15 inches from center on either side to get and this is where the flat starts so this whole section here between these two lines is going to be arched so now I'm just going to get to work on shrinking You'll see this panel start to move pretty quick. So each one of these lines, I'm gonna get it centered. Centered on the tool. And just push down all the way. I'm gonna go to my 15 inch mark. I'm gonna flip it over and do this side. So I can try to shrink it even. After I get those shapes all set and I'm happy with them, what I'll do is I'll switch out the shrinker die to my stretch die and I'll work on the flats. Alright, so I'm going to work the other direction now, do the exact same thing.
I'm gonna use my template as a gauge. Yeah, so check this out. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this thing to bend the way I want it to. It's cause this lip is, I think it's too tall. This lip's too tall. I can't, I can't compress the metal enough. So I think I have to keep shaving this edge down in order to get it to shrink. So I'm gonna work on that, try to, I'm gonna see if I can get it to go a little more. I've been working on this, this uh, rear cross member cover for a little while now. This is where I'm at. See, I got a pretty good arch to it. And for the most part, it's pretty even. It's kind of hard to tell, but I kind of just held this up best I could. It's close enough. I need to switch out my shrinking jaws and put in my stretching jaws. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna get this cross member cut down to length. I need 40 inches. And we'll see how it fits. I made this platform here with a separate set of holes so if i ever get another one of these i can mount it on the other side hopefully although at that point i may just buy the damn stand because this stand works okay but i'm sure it doesn't work as good as the ones that are you know engineered to do so from from an actual engineer's brain not just me hacking around with some extra parts I had in the garage. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can flatten out the ends of this and get this thing fitting the way it's supposed to. All right, so I got my mark here. Got my 15 inches off center. You can see that? I mean, it's it's instant. Just one hit with that, and it already flattens. It jumps it right out. So I'm going to skip to every other line at this point. So every two inches I'm going to do it. I think it'll be a bit too much if I don't go more than that, closer than that. So you can see I'm going from front to back, front to back, just trying to keep it even. Now obviously it's not going to fit. I think what I need to do is I actually need to start flattening it out a lot sooner. My memory card ran out of storage. <laughs> it's always something. Batteries die, out of focus, out of storage, memory card doesn't work. It's always something. So I, it was only a few minutes when, since the camera shut off, I have been chipping away at that cross member cover. I think I got it pretty close, but what I need to do in order to really know exactly where it's going to sit on the car, I need to cut it so it's narrow so it'll fit. So I had four inches on each side that was extra. I need to remove those four inches and get it actually sitting inside the car on the cross rail, the cross member. Get that cut real quick. Right on 
my center mark. I think that's pretty good. I'm shrinking and stretching it and with the arch, I kind of lost a little bit of length on the ends. So unfortunately when I just cut it, it ended up being about a half inch too short on each side. But I think I, think I have a lot more arch than I need and that's kind of where the metal went. What I could have done was measured it again and then cut it to actually what it was. I'm being more picky than I should be on this car. I shouldn't even be doing this cross member. At the end of the day, it's not gonna make one bit of a difference if this is open or not. I mean, hell, I could just leave this open too, but I like things being finished and neat and making it look like it was something, like it was actually a nice finished car back in the day at one point in time. All right, now that this is all set in place, what I need to do now is get to work on this this panel here and then the front panel. Front panel's taller because the floor, if you, I forget if I told you or not, this is actually lower than the cross member and this is at the height of the top of the cross member. About an inch and a half difference, give or take. I'm gonna need to modify this floor right here Cut this a little further back so I can get this nut and the shock off in the future if need be without having to lift the body of the car up. Or if not myself, somebody else, if I end up moving the car along. So I'm going to throw this back in the car just to get her out of my way. much moving around too many things moving around too much going on all right everybody I'm struggling over here the reason why I'm struggling it's chilly in the garage both my, my both of my um, SD cards and my GoPro filled up so until I wipe them clean I can't really I can't use my GoPro so uh, I don't have my SD card and my big camera because that camera just wasn't focusing good on the last video and it really aggravates me. Like the beginning half of the video sucked. The second half was okay. I didn't change anything, so I don't know why. You know, it was good, it was bad, then good. So I'm just like the hell with it. I'm just gonna keep pushing forwards because I have time right now and I don't wanna be just messing around with cameras and whatnot. So I'm just using my phone for the moment. I'm gonna show you guys what I got done. I'll flip the camera around, check it out. All right, it's not done yet. Things, pieces are just clamped together. This is the top panel. Got the, the back panel and then the front panel. The front panel is just sitting here. What I did was I took this flanging tool. You see that top portion right there? What that does, if you're not aware, that creates an indentation. I, I, I'm kind of, I'm hoping you can kind of see it. Basically, it creates creates a step, so the thickness of the metal, roughly, whatever the thickness of that step is, is the thickness that sets it back. 
but I think you guys can kind of see it. In any event, I got that done on the back, on the front panel. I did the same on the back. You can kind of see it there, that edge. The reason being is I really didn't give myself a whole lot of room width wise. I should have probably gone like a quarter of an inch wider on this. So by stepping those flanges in, I gained the thickness of the sheet metal. Uh, da, 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 da. I got just kind of everything clamped in place. What I'm gonna do is, actually what I did was on the other side of that tool, there's a hole punching, hole punching uh, tool, I guess. The other on the front and back, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spot weld the front and the back. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna punch some holes in this flange as well. Also on this flange, I'm gonna get these done. I'll show you how this works. Pretty, pretty cool little tool. Just put it on there, pull the trigger, punches a hole. It's cheating, yes, but you know what? I don't have tons of time. And I just want to get this thing. I want to get the trunk area buttoned up on this car. So like I said, pretty quick and simple. This piece of steel wasn't long enough. So you can see on this side, it's a lot longer. This side's shorter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this piece, this piece, and this piece welded together so I can take it out in one unit. What I need to do is I need to add three inches of steel. See that space right there? I know you probably can't really, but there is a space there because I ran short on that piece of metal. All right, let's get this done real quick. See, it just punches a nice little hole. Make sure you can weld it. A lot of tools like this that over the years I see people use on YouTube or just regular television and I want them, you know? It's pretty cool. I know that it's not a super expensive tool, but the amount of time you gotta empty it out every now and then. The amount of time it saves is incredible. You know, how long would it take to just drill all those holes? A while. I'm going to get these panels spot welded in, get this thing all kind of buttoned up together. So I'm going to actually do, I think, one, two, three, four. I'm wondering if I should go around. I wonder if I should go around the edge and use that tool. Yeah, you know what? I think I will, but I think I'll put... Can't really get, I can put a self tapper here. Be really, I don't really know as if I'll be able to get self tappers back there. I, I really don't think I will because of the panel kind of covers everything. I just may end up welding that panel right in the car. All right, let's get this, uh, let's get this, get this welded up. All right, everyone, I kind of struggled with cameras this afternoon, which is a bummer because I was really looking forward to, you know, just kind of going through the process of doing the rest of the trunk pan. You can probably tell how I kind of did things, hopefully, but I want to show you the finished product. It's not quite done yet. It's obviously it's not all welded into the car yet because I don't want to go quite that far, but I got the pieces welded together that I wanted to get together. And also I welded the transmit, the, I, I welded the cross member hump to this back panel. The reason why I did that is I checked it first. I can remove the, that whole piece as one unit. And then underneath the gas tank, the front portion of the trunk can be removed as a whole separate unit. So I thought it would be okay if I would weld that. Like I said, I tested it first to make sure I could get it out of the car, but I'll flip the camera around and show you guys where I'm at, what I ended up getting done. I'm happy with it. Like I said, it's not quite done yet. I got to do the blisters over the shocks and just drill some holes and either put some self tappers or uh, i'll probably just weld it right to the car just really no reason not to all right so that is 
the finished product as of this point now, the, the it will rotate forward some when I when I clamp these tabs down and weld those tabs. I'll probably just do a couple self tappers on each side just to pinch it down to this sheet metal when it comes time to weld it. And then I'll get everything uh, welded up. But you guys saw what I did. I used my shrinker stretcher on the top portion. I bent these, I rolled these edges over on my table like I have been doing. I did that first. And then I shrunk and stretched to get the shape that I wanted. I cut my templates off of my cardboard template that I made. I used the front and the back. I still need to finish this little piece here, but I'm gonna do that another day. I'll do that the same time I do the blisters over the shocks. Um, that's gonna be next. That's where I'm at. Apologize, I was struggling with cameras. I swear, like one of these days, my cameras are gonna work perfect. My batteries are gonna stay charged. Uh, my, what else? My SD cards are gonna work. Like any other YouTubers out there know, if you guys spend a lot of time doing this, you know that's the struggle. It's just constantly something. It's always something and it sucks because you work so hard to try to create content, good content, because you know the people want to see these, you know, the projects get done, but just sometimes things don't go in your favor, but you know what, you just got to keep moving forwards. And that's what I did today. I said, you know what the heck with it? I have the time, I have, the, I have everything I need. I'm out here, it's a little chilly. See my breath? Yeah, it's cold out here. But that's where, I'm, that's where I'm at today. Hope you guys uh, enjoy this video the, the best I could do. So I will see you guys soon. I'm hoping tomorrow I'll be out here for a little while, finish up those shock blisters, mount the battery tray. I'm happy with what I got done. I think it looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth, it's clean. It's probably the nicest sheet metal on the car. <laughs> By far, it definitely is. Uh, no more talking. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate all the support, the likes, the comments. Share the channel. You guys have been doing it on Facebook. I really appreciate it. My name is Michael Attender. You, this old hot rod in YouTube. I'm a member of the Tornadoes Car Club. We're a bunch of traditional hot rod guys. We love these cars. We love dragging stuff out of the weeds. Finding the parts, going on the searches, the adventures, the journeys. That's what I'm all about. That's what this channel is all about. And just building cool old hot rods. So hope you guys enjoy what I'm doing. Appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye-bye.